specific immune response B lymphocytes. Okay, so again, a bit of a recap. First stage is phagocytosis. Second stage is the T lymphocytes are activated. And third up, B lymphocytes are activated. Okay then, so B lymphocytes. B cells. So we can say B cells are activated by interleukins or interleukines released by activated helper T cells. How did the T cell helper cells get activated? Well, that was the phagocytes or the neutrophils presenting the antigens from the pathogen. These are all examples of cell signaling. Again, much like T cells, there are many types of B cell. Each one has a different antibody, which is a protein on its surface. So B cells with the complementary antibody to the pathogen's antigen form an antigen antibody complex. Pathogen, antigen, it's very easy to get these the wrong way around. You might even catch me saying it wrong once or twice, but the pathogen has an antigen and the, the human body cells have produce antibodies. Key term, bit of a long one, an antigen, antibody complex. Again, if we remember from the T lymphocytes video, the clonal selection will take place, and this means that only the B cells that form an antigen antibody complex will divide to make many copies of itself. And so the, the selection process is clonal selection, and the, the making many copies of itself we call clonal expansion. These clones, that these many, many copies, are going to be plasma cells and memory cells. Okay, so let's put this in a bit of a diagram. Again, I'm going to draw, I'm only going to draw two this time, two different B cells. Draw my antibodies in blue. Remember, antibodies have like a Y shape, effectively. I'm just drawing four out of pure ease. And the end of the antibody has the variable region. So again, I'm going to draw the variable region here in a, as the shape. The shape is important. Always with proteins, the tertiary structure, the shape of the folded protein is either going to be complementary or not complementary. So this B cell here, I'm going to draw with rounded cups on the end. And this one over here, I'm going to draw with V-shaped. If we say consistent with our pathogen's antigen, if we followed it through from phagocytosis, we're going to see that this one is going to be complementary. So let's have it.
So it's selected by clonal selection. This one's quite rounded. It's not going to form an antigen antibody complex because they're different shapes. So this one is clonally selected and then it's going to divide by mitosis. And that process is called clonal expansion. And this process here is clonal selection. And we're going to make many copies. The many copies are called plasma cells. They go into battle kind of straight away. I'm actually going to put this down as a fourth stage in our So plasma cells, let's define them. We can say that plasma cells are clones of the clonally selected B cell. And obviously this is going to have the complementary antibody to the pathogen's antigen. So these guys are going to basically make many, many copies of antibodies that go into the bloodstream and the antibody is then going to go and defeat the pathogen. And memory cells are clonally selected, they're plasma cells that stay in the bloodstream after the infection. After the infection, basically you've won the battle, you've won the war. The plasma cells are no longer needed in large quantities, but memory cells are retained so that if you get an infection from the same pathogen with the same antigen, your memory cells, you don't have to go through this entire process of phagocytosis, T lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes. Basically, you've got the plasma cells ready to go and they're already primed up. And all you have to do is go through clonal expansion, make many copies of this, and you're away to go. So a memory cell is... a uh, it's a plasma cell that's kept or retained in case you encounter the same pathogen again.